right. Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan. I am a registered nurse, um, ER nurse turned very recently postpartum, change of everything. Um, <laughs> been in healthcare about 13 years total. Um, and I am a, um, if you didn't notice, very <laughs> out loud and proud queer individual. <laughs> we love it. We we love it. What, do you want to give us your intro that you normally do for your car chats? <laughs> sure. <laughs> See, don't mess. Oh, squish the dog. Oh. Um, absolutely. Um, hi, guys. Welcome to another episode of Car Ride Conversations with Chronically Rye featuring me. I'm Rye. <laughs> what, wonderful. I study all of you and know you all very well in depth. So trust me, we're going to go there. No, there is no hiding. Um, so then why don't we go to Chase? All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Chase Anderson. I am a child and adolescent psychiatry fellow working at UCSF. Um, I live in the Castro. I decided if I was going to be living in a gay city, I needed to be as gay as effing possible. And so I am okay. smack dab in the middle of the Castro. <laughs> Um, my pronouns are he, him, and his, and I identify as a rampant homosexual, so. <laughs> Not a regular, but a No, 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 no. We don't do regular. Mm, we don't. No do basics. It. We're not. Mm -mm. Basic, right? Not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> Love it. Uh, and finishing up with Taylor. Hi, everyone. I am Taylor. I am a rising M2 um, at Robert Wood Johnson Medical School. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, theirs, and I identify as a trans, non-binary, queer individual. Obnoxious and inclusive. I feel like those are the two things that like I want to like do and experience. Like obnoxious because like I like we missed it last year. You know what I mean? Like there was still the month of June came by, you know what I mean? Like everyone it looked very different. Um, and that is all fair. But I think that like there's something about being out and being surrounded by queer people. I went to just like I was in Philadelphia last weekend and just like there was like a pride hosted like parks on tap kind of beer thing. And I it was I, people and I like for like I almost forgot what it's like to be at pride like to see people just wearing rainbows here and there and it felt very nice to like almost like be at home where I'm like yeah I vibe with these people <laughs> these people are like me I love that so I miss that so that I think that's like what I mean by like obnoxious is just like I want to wear the rainbows I want to like shout from the rooftops and then inclusive because like I'm going with some friends and I want other people to feel like they also belong there like even if it's your first pride like no one's gonna know it's gonna be fine um but yeah <laughs> Okay, love it, love it. Love that. Um, I would say restorative justice. Um, I think restorative and like Taylor, what you were saying was really beautiful that like we didn't have pride last year and like kids have had to like go back in the closet being at home, like adults even have with like their families. And like, I wanted to be restored. I wanted to be healing, like restorative in the sense of like, our community got fractured in a lot of ways and like people lost connections and it was hard to keep in contact. We didn't get to have the events we wanted to have. So getting to be out with a bunch of other LGBTQ plus people is a really healing moment. Like I cannot tell you how healing it is just to like walk outside and there's that pride flag in the Castro and like gay dads are holding hands and their kids are there. Mm. And I'm just like, oh, oh my God, I do can have this life. I mean, I don't want it cause you know I'm on grinder right now, but like, one day I could have that in the and future. then yeah in the future in the future um justice because I think we have so much still to do um I think we especially like we don't talk about it enough that like there are different segments of the gay community like there's white gays and like why are we not thinking about racism inside of our own community why are we not activated as much as we should be for the transgender community right now like why are we leaving people behind we are supposed mm -hmm. to be a family so like what justice do we bring to ourselves and how do we enact justice like on a broader scale and use our like our power as mm -hmm. gay people to help everybody so mm -hmm. love that um well mine <laughs> um i haven't actually gotten to celebrate pride in well like really go to a pride in so five, five years, maybe it's been years because I was living in a town that that did not exist. Um, mm. for a while, very Southern Baptist, very, very large Southern Baptist 
university, uh, <laughs> but it didn't exist. There was nothing. Um, and this is the first time in my entire life that there's been pride merchandise in Target in a mm. big retailer. Living down here, I have checked Target every single year since college. Nothing ever. And this year, they did. <laughs> and um, just little things like that. Um, my town now has, I'm living in, a, in another town now that's a bit more queer, a bit more accessible. And we have a diversity center that just opened like a year and a half ago. And so my words for this year are going to be, um, it'll be a bit creative because I'm not sure if we're having an official pride and I just started a new job. So I'm not sure I'll be able to travel to somewhere with a bigger pride. So if not, I'm very excited to get to explore a new town and see what my diversity center is offering. And I know we've got like a, a gay fun run going on that I'm totally dragging my rainbow wheelchair out and just be in the middle of that. <laughs> and um, so creative and also accessible. I think that it definitely, um, I know that we were talking earlier about how many people have had to go back in the closet because of quarantine or have had to at least, you know, tone it down a bit and not couldn't really be their full out and proud selves. Mm. And so I think of those individuals and, you know, people who may have had a lot of time to reflect on their sexualities <laughs> in quarantine. And therefore this is their first pride. This is their first, you know, moment of self-discovery. And I think that's why I'm finding myself wearing, I swear, rainbows every single day because I just want everyone around me like, it's okay. There are those of us here in this town. You are protected. You are loved. You are welcome. Um, that's why I have my rainbow pin that's always on my badge for at work mm -hmm. because living in such a role. Yeah, I saw mm -hmm. those that showing up. Those are so awesome. But yes, because living in such a rural area, you know, you just don't see that. And so just mm. having a little token is that kind of reminder that, you know, you are included, you are loved, and you are not alone. I think for myself, I I just keep telling myself that it's, it's not me, it's them. Um, and like reminding myself of that because... I feel like I've had this interaction more like in person recently while meeting like new med students. So something that I've like, I realized this in college, but I was like, Oh, maybe it is. Maybe it's just me, but no, it's not, it's not me. Um, mm -hmm. Is that like when meeting new people, especially men, especially white men, um, I feel like they don't know how to like when meeting new people, they don't know how to talk to me. And it's partially because I don't look um, stereotypically like a woman. I don't look quite like a man. Like as soon as I open my mouth, like my voice is not exactly what you might match if you thought I was a dude. Um, so I feel like a lot of men don't know how to talk to me. And then mm -hmm. we just kind of stare at each other and just sit there in silence. And I'm like, cool. Okay. Yeah, this is great. And then I help try to make conversation and it doesn't really go anywhere. And then I'm sitting here trying to think, is this me? Am I really this awkward? And I'm like, no, it's not me. It's them. It's that fact that like, I'm a little bit different. It's the fact that they don't interact with people a lot who look like me. Um, and like the cues that they know, like the normal social cues that they rely on, um, mm. like maybe like a woman, like flirting with them or something like that. Like those aren't there. It's just, they're just not there. And so then they don't know what to do. And then we kind of stare at each other. Um, but yeah, I just kind of tell myself that like, it's, it's not me. I know, like, I can talk to people. I have friends. I've made new friends. So it's not me. And I just keep telling myself that. So that's what I would say to other people that. that, like, you'll find people that you click with, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you'll find people who, like, match your speed, who want to know about you, that will ask questions about you, actually have a conversation. Um, and you don't have to waste your time on <laughs> people that just don't, are not interested in you. No, I love that. I absolutely love that. It's, it's, it's not me. It's you. I'm gonna say that as I, as I start dating again. It's not. It's not me. It's, it's you. That's you. Is it? Yeah, it was me, y'all. But it, you know, I also think that that interaction is just kind of white men in general. But I'm just gonna throw that. Out. <laughs> very, very, very true. Very true. Um, but okay, love that, Chase. Yeah, I think for me, I always take a step back and I'm like, I get scared every post I do for the most part. And when I write those articles, it is scary. I, the newest one that came out, I immediately like was going in the, the comments, like, cause most of the comments on Twitter, like I've crafted a really good sphere and I, I do that intentionally. 
Um, but then like there was somebody who slipped through and was like, oh, so you're not just an N word. You're like a homophobic slur too. And I was like, oh my God. And then I like laughed because I was just like, it's not original. It's like, you took the time out of your day to do this. Like, what are you doing with your life? So I blocked and reported it. But the, like when the posts go up and like, when I think about them, I'm like, this could help somebody else speak up. Um, there is this thing in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. We don't talk about JK Rowling cause like, you know, <laughs> problematic. But there was this thing that she had Neville say to Harry where he says like, I noticed that you standing up for other people people helped other people stand up so whenever I do a post or whenever I do something that's really scary I hope that it reaches somebody and they're like I can speak up now I can be that person who is out too I can be that person who says like no racism is wrong at this institution because I used to try to fix all these people and like pander to like the white authority because I was like okay if I like manage how I do things and like if I blend in well enough it'll be fine it never works and it took years to try to change some of those people. And yes, they changed, but like it took so much effort. And so now my mentality is like, I craft my post to be like, to help the people who have been made to feel alone, not the people who have made others feel lonely. Um, so Ooh. whenever I get scared. Say that yeah. again, say it again. Oh, say it again. I forgot what I said. Um, I craft my okay. post to, <laughs> to help those who have been made to feel lonely, not those who have made to feel, make them feel alone um because it's not about them like it's not for them it's not about them they are the problem so going to what taylor said it's them um so i always think to myself like you will hopefully reach one person who needs to know that they are not alone mm -hmm. so that's what i always think about yes i was like that that was that that we're gonna make that in the clip what i don't know what minute this is I, on this thing, I can't even tell you. But but I love that because I think that's a thing that, and this is why I, I crafted this group. And I will be honest, because I used Ryan's pictures originally for my original uh, pitch. And I don't know if I showed you the picture, but I think I have it somewhere that I literally used your pictures as my pitch for this this campaign. Oh. And when I, I selected and they were like, okay, choose individuals. And I specifically had rules i said the one thing that i will not do is include cis white gay men i said there will be no white gay men in this at all so that was my first not happening and then i said and i wanted to pick individuals that at the end of the day embody what it means to be onerous of themselves and i said in whatever it looks like and i think that's the thing about this group of individuals that i will say we represent something that needs to be seen and one of my questions later down the road is a little bit more about our community but we represent a very small, small pocket of what is out there, unfortunately, especially in the healthcare setting, because whether it's black individuals at 2.6%, I think it's black male plus throw gay on top of it. You're like, honey, I'm like the chipacabra. Okay. Like I am the walking <laughs> abominable snowman. Like, okay. I don't know what it would be. And I don't know if you would know the statistic on, on individuals that identify as trans at all, Taylor. I don't know if you would know that. Um, at, at all, but I would imagine it's lower than us at 2.6. And then think of, again, going from able-bodied to ably challenged individuals now, like what you had done with your original post, you know, Ryan, about having to take two years, two or three years to find actual work in a career that it's like, well, I have experience, I'm able to do X, Y, and Z. And like you said, you had to lie, eventually just not include it on the, the your, your forms. And to get the job so i'm like that was the thing that i'm like i want people to see that this is what queer community can look like this is what healthcare looks like there is not one identity of granted there is the mainstream of what mainstream thinks our community looks like which is a problem um but that there's so much importance and that's why i love what you're saying you know chase and taylor that it, it's not we've been made to think all our lives it's us we're different we're the outcasts we're the outliers no no it's not us, it's you. It's the way that you haven't been challenged to think differently, to speak differently, to believe differently. And I do that to you, but you make me feel as though I have some job or responsibility and that I'm the failure because I didn't make you feel comfortable. Screw that, it is it is you. And I love, and we'll, again, another question that I have in my head about how all of us on social media uh, and what that means. But I, I love 
what has been said thus far, um, that it isn't us, it is, it is them. And it's not for the person that makes you feel the outcast. It makes you feel different. It is for the one that feels that way. And that's what you're, we're doing this for. Um, sorry, that was an intru introduction, in, in intrusion. Ryan, uh, what do you say to, to yourself? <laughs> Um, I, I think it's the, the exact same thing, kind of echoing what, you know, Taylor and Chase both said. Um, I was uh, thinking about, Chase, how you said how you kind of crafted your sphere in Twitter. So I've done the same thing with my Instagram. And I very recently had my post about my new job go viral on LinkedIn. <laughs> of all places in the world for a post to go viral. Um, it currently has almost 18 million views, which is about a 17.5 million more people than I thought existed on LinkedIn. Wow. Yeah. But having been, so I've had chronically rhyme my Instagram for since 2017, been very out and proud, both with disability culture, both with health, working in healthcare and both with being queer AF. Um, and so that's kind of this, this happy little bubble that I've lived in where I haven't dealt with a ton of pushback and a ton of haters. You know, I, we all get them. They pop up every now and again, but not, not all that much. Lord have mercy. Mm. When I had a post on LinkedIn, the amount of hate and bitterness mm. and just ridiculousness that I have received in my message inbox from that place, because it is generally our older, cis, white, heterosexual men. Mm. That's just a little thing. So that, it's fascinating for me. And so I... I'd gotten comfortable with posting, you know, kind of what well, I'd been working the same job for three years. Uh, they knew what I posted. Then I wasn't on great terms with them anyway as an institution. So I didn't really pay much mind to that. I didn't have a lot of hate. So I didn't really think, uh, you know, I got comfortable with the community that I was advocating towards, not realizing that it was not necessarily the people who needed to hear my message. And mm. so branching out to different social media outlets through Instagram, through I mean, through uh, Facebook and through LinkedIn and having to face all that hate again and having to suddenly starting a new job with a new company and, and suddenly having that, oh dear Lord, is this post going to be the one that gets me fired, gets me blacklisted from hospitals in my region? Is this going to be the one that, you know, gets me called in the principal's office? What's going to happen with this one? Mm. I live in a small town. Is this going to be the one where somebody researches the background and finds out exactly where I live? It's scary. It's mm. scary to be this out and proud and it takes time to get here. And so I think every time where I have that, that moment and that fear before a post or that fear before a speaking engagement or, you know, whatever have you, it's exactly like we've said, it's just, this isn't about me. If this mm -hmm. is the reason I get fired from my job, Lord, help them for my social media. If this <laughs> is the reason, you know, that something happens to me, okay, I, this is mm -hmm. just like working in healthcare. There are risks that we have accepted living our lives this way. There are risks we have accepted working in this line of work. Mm -hmm. And it takes a long time to kind of come to terms with that and be okay with that. And I hate that we have to be, mm -hmm. but we do. And mm. so I think that that little pep talk of it's not about me, it's about the broader spectrum at this point, it's about our community, and it's about that advocacy that we needed when we were first coming out, when we were first, whatever we have gone through, it's about being those people that we needed. That's why we're here. I think yeah. we don't talk about the joy enough. Like they're like, could, I would have never envisioned as like a little kid that I would be sitting here right now doing a pride campaign. I was like, I mean, okay, of course I envisioned being president one day, but we all have. But like, I never envisioned I'd be with three other amazing people talking about like, how do we heal our world? Like, that is something that I don't think carries across into the healthcare system because people stop those conversations. Like, mm -hmm. Like black people and gay people and minoritized people in medicine, like come in with such joy and like want to heal and want to make the world a better place. Why are we not providing space for that joy and that like storytelling and that like nuance? We lose the thread a lot of the time. Um, so I wish that healthcare providers and people in healthcare 
knew that there's so much passion in our community that if you just got the hell out of our way, we could fix so many things. That's the thing I keep thinking about. I'm like, we have the solutions already. Just stop getting in my way. And that's why mm -hmm. I love UCSF. They're like, I got here and they're just like, do what you want. We trust you. You're going to be great. Let us know if you need anything. Like my program director, something came up with like somebody emailing me like hate mail. And she was like, take screenshots. I'm here with you. We will do what we need to do. And you were totally fine. You were doing the absolute best thing right now. And I was like, great. And I just moved on with my life. Mm. It wasn't like I had to stop. I had to like think about it. I had to worry about how my attendings were going to think about it. I didn't have to worry about any of that. So like, how do we bring that in where people get out of our way and let us fix the problems? Because like, I would love for all cis white men to be fixing these problems like they are supposed to be doing because they caused them. But that's not happening. So get out of our way while we do it. Mm. Love it. Yeah. Taylor? Um, I think that, uh, so I'm a student, right? Like I'm a student. So like my world is definitely like a little bit different. And I feel like the narrative around like queer health is constantly like what JP said, like constantly about AIDS and hypersexualized. And I, what I want to see changed is like, like these topics are good. They're very important, but I feel like oftentimes they're put with no context at all. Like, for example, we get statistics about like trans kids, like 50%, it's a little bit less than that, but like 50% are like going to attempt uh, like suicide at some point. I'm like, yes, that's very sad, very real, but like, why? <laughs> why is that? Mm. And, and there's no context that we just get statistic after statistic after statistic and it's tiring. And as like sitting from, as myself, as a trans person sitting on the other side of that, I'm like, I know, cool. What are we gonna do about it? Um, and then we don't continue that conversation. And that's what gets very frustrating as a student sitting on this end. Um, and the couple other queer friends that I have and talked to, they also are like about their own identities about, you know, being bi or being like a gay man. They're sitting here being like, yes, we also hear these statistics about our identities. And again, this is all anyone ever knows, but our straight friends or like straight classmates, they're like, oh yeah, this is great information. Like they don't know any better because this is what the school has like taught them. Like this is like the education that they're receiving. So they're like, like, I felt like I learned so much and I'm like, yes in the sense that like you learn more than you did before right like that's good but it could be better there could be a lot of improvement there's a lot more context and I just wish kind of like Chase said I wish there was more context and also like can we also talk about trans joy or just queer joy in general like I do really think that's like a huge important part about being this community um and we don't talk about it enough we just talk about like the really sad parts of it which are really important obviously like there's a lot of work to be done but like I love being queer and I, I like want other people to know that. Like, I love being queer. I wouldn't change that for the world. Yes. So, yes, yes. I want other people to know that as well. Like people look at you and it's just like, oh, and I'm like, why are you looking at me? Like, oh, sweetheart. Right. No, no, no. Right. This is, this is, oh, I am real glad. Mm. Like, no, no, don't, don't get it twisted. Like I, I don't need your pity. Right. And I think that's the thing that I look at it and I'm just like, I don't like being looked at. It's like, that's what we're framed as. It's like, oh, do you feel depressed? I'm like, no, I don't. I'm depressed that that boy over there is not giving me attention and I need to make out with somebody. Like, that's what I'm depressed about. And it's all gonna look at me. Right? Like, like, it's on this desk somewhere. Uh, but you're just like, no, that is not what my, like, my moment is. And I just like, and I feel like it's weird because at least with education wise, like you said, we get, it's always framed in like DSM-5, always put in this whole separate section. And then even I was explaining to my mother, cause she's a physician. And I was saying, well, even with the way that we get prompted to have discussions about, you know, queer individuals is, oh, it's a special case. It's called a special cases where we learn. It's like, so I'm already a special case. Like what's the difference? Well, they were coming in to ask about birth control and they're gay. How is that different than a general checkup? Like, like I don't understand how is that different than the, than the abdominal exam that I had to practice? Like, what are we talking about here? But like, I just feel like it's one of those things, like you said, and that was one of the, the posts that I love that you wrote about was trans joy. It's like, show us being happy. Show us being, you know, in our best selves. I said, I don't want to be in a heterosexual relationship. Like, I love a man. Like, I'm not trying to love anybody else other than him. Okay, above six feet and just, you know, <laughs> that can envelop me. I'm like five eight. But you know, like I won't be low a spoon. Like it's fine. Like I, I just 
but I feel like that's one of those things that we're just like, I feel like that's why, again, for this month more than ever, that I'm like, I just want us to be able to have that full circle and that 360 moment of what it is to be queer. Like, it's a small piece of what you all are seeing, which is an important piece, like you said, Taylor. It's an important piece for people to know, but it's not the entire puzzle. And that's the thing that I'm like, we, I wish that people, especially in our education system, you know, with, with medicine, um, framed it in that context like this is a small piece an important piece but not just queer health it's all around health and where we all need to fit in here um so yeah sorry again that was where i was like yes thank you uh ryan uh what, what do you think and where do you feel like we need to kind of it needs to fit, be fixed lord i, I would never so just tailing off of what you just said about you know how is this any different from a general assessment i will never forget so I, <laughs> um, though I grew up in a super rural area, I was raised by hippies, nudists, belly dancers, and jazz musicians, which explains a lot of this. But, so I was always that weird kid that was in kindergarten and got trouble, got in trouble because I fell on the playground and I hit my pelvic bone and they asked me what, was, what hurt and I said vagina and I got sent to the principal's office. That was <laughs> me. My mom, hmm, Lord, I've never seen a mother raise him. <laughs> but, um, so I've always kind of been that really open person in a very closeted area, but I will never forget. I was a brand new nurse. I just started a nurse residency program for ER medicine. We we're sitting down and I was in a very, very, very Southern Baptist area in a very Southern Baptist hospital. And the instructor started talking about pronouns. Um, and this was back in 20, you know, 14, 15 which was in the very, very kinds of beginnings of that becoming more mainstream. And so I was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm like, all right, cool. We're talking about pronouns and my new hospital job. This is great. I'll never forget the girl beside me goes, well, how do I ask them, you know, what they've got down there? I'm like the same way you'd ask any other patient if that is, is prevalent to their medical care. And, and, and then you, you can also ask pronouns. And this, it just this idea of this body being treated as a human body, just because it wasn't exactly presenting the way that you know, our textbooks at the time had taught us or something like that. And just to, to see that this was just, you know, in a room of very educated individuals and this was so far out of left field is fascinating to me. It's the same thing working rural medicine for so long. You know, you're surrounded by physicians, nurses, people who are very, very, very educated. But Lord have mercy, you have some closeted ideals when it comes to things that should be worrisome, like caring for trans people, like caring for gay people in general. It just blows me out of the water every single day and just shows me, you know, that's that's where we need work. We need more inclu inclusive medical texts. We need this education, those Lord, those education modules that we have to do every other day. I need one to be more inclusive, at least in my area. I know they probably exist elsewhere. But the day that I see that, I will, I'm on the ERG at my hospital. I am working on it. <laughs>I think originally I would say like keep going like we need more people like us like the four of us we definitely need more people like us and if you identify with any one of the four of us like keep going because you will get there and it is hard and it is exhausting sometimes but there will be a day where it you will you will get there you will find people who will push you who will <laughs> honestly drag drag you with them across the finish line. Me and my friends tell, I say that all the time, like through M1 year, we're like, you are dragging me through this last block. Like, please help me. And we're like, okay, we got you. So you will find people who will do that for you because like, even myself, like, I feel like I get questions sometimes about like how to apply to med school and stuff like that. And I'm like, I will give you all the advice that I can because I want you also to get it across that finish line. We need more people like you. We need more people like me, you know, like, there's not enough. We could always use more and it is exhausting. But if we help each other, like one by one, we're just going to try to like pull everyone through till eventually, you know, we are rep this group of four of us will be representative, hopefully one day right. of like what the health care system could be. Um, it is exhausting. And I just feel like acknowledging that is important, but also saying like, you can, you can do this. Like 
I will help you do this. And I think that's super important. Like that type of like mentorship is important for people within our community. And I can you imagine we're going to be the old people. We're going to be like the Marsha P. Johnson's, like the older, like the gay art. The, the rock. I was like, I was like, oh God, we're going to be those people. Like back when they were, you all were fighting the good. I was like, oh God, honey. Like hopefully my skin <laughs> still looks this way. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, no pressure. Yeah. Well, I know, but you're just like, God, am I going to be that person that I'm like, please let me still look slightly good and can appreciate it. Like buy a brother a meal at a certain point. Like, uh, <laughs> Sorry. I'm just like, I'm hoping that comes along with it. Um, like we thank you. Here's something for free. Like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, something. Somebody like, thank me. Um, <laughs> sorry. Chase, what, what do you say? Well, I also noticed Ryan is going last usually. So Ryan, do you want to go? Oh, okay. yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I keep it no, 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 it's okay. I just want to make sure we like, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm so stuck on the picturing myself as the, this Marsha P. Johnson. Maybe <laughs> that I'd completely got like, Lord have mercy, I forgot what I was going to say. All right. I was just like, I was just talking about, I was just talking about her to somebody else that I was like recently. I was like, oh, and she's like, oh, you're just doing so many things that you're going to be like, Am I going to be that way? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to be JP the hot mess, but that's okay. It's like, it's fine. <laughs> that's what I told you. Oh my gosh. But yeah, I, I absolutely think that, you know, I, I hope, same thing that like Taylor was saying, that this eventually is a picture of a more inclusive healthcare and a picture of what our healthcare community will eventually look like. And like you're saying, you know, it's exhausting. Mm. I don't want to look at my email box right now. Don't even talk to me about my LinkedIn one in the 3000. I need a personal assistant. I'm advertising. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's exhausting. And there are days where well, I can't think of a thing to post. I'm like, I, y'all don't want to hear any of the things that are coming out of my mouth. There's not enough coffee in the world. I have seen too many vaginas today. I can't look at my own. <sighs> and it, it's just, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know. Postpartum life. <laughs> no, it's just, you know, it's a lot, but it's another thing that it's worth it. And it's, mm -hmm. it's thing that we just got to keep pushing forward on, you know, this, and that little help is always very, very good, but it's worth every single second. And that's why we, you know, stay up late answering all these inboxes and talking to these people that are, you know, since my post on LinkedIn went viral, I get asked every single day about how can I be a healthcare provider with a disability? How can I be a healthcare provider in a wheelchair? And I'm sitting here going, y'all, I've, I've had this job for exactly one month. I'm trying to figure out how to be a healthcare provider in a wheelchair. So y'all just give me about like two more months. <laughs> but it's, it's so fascinating that we're in this point where we can share our journey and our struggles and everything that we're going through in real time. And mm -hmm. really, you know, you know, things that I kind of was thinking about when we were talking about Marsha P. Johnson, it was like, it'd been kind of cool if she'd existed during the time of Instagram and to see what was going through her head and what her posts would have looked like. And would this be a person that, you know, we would be here at our round table with us today. It's, it's mm -hmm. fascinating to me what social media has done to us. And I love the ability to reach out to that, that newer, just out, just, accepting a disability, just accepting a racial bias, whatever have you from this group of people, these new individuals say, hey, you know, thank you for what you're doing. I've never seen this before. And you're that person that I needed. And it's just, it blows me out of the water every day. And it's hard, but it's worth it. <laughs> and I, I think that. I have like just side of relief, like five or six different times this entire conversation because like this <laughs> not exist enough and there are not many times that i'm just like oh my god yes these are things that i hadn't even realized i was feeling that are the exact same it's beautiful <laughs> and i hope god, that i you know my post and what i do is the exact same reaction to the people that are reading them because i think that's the reason that we do it yeah love it love it chase so you wanted to go last i mean i just wanted to <laughs> point out that like we gotta let you know certain people in the room speak before the like man in the room so i just like wanted to you know oh, I do diligence 
quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I picked like up on that, but like, I just, you know me, I'm trying to be respectful too. I it. Um, okay. So I think for me, I was going to say, help them, I want them to know they are never alone. And I think that holds true. And I always try to represent that. But what I really want people to know is find your voice. Because I think each of us come at things from a very different angle, um, but it works. And we need all those prongs because if we all did things a certain way, then we get shut down. Like, but if one of us gets shut down, we all have different avenues that we go down now, which is really beautiful. Like, I went to a Black Lives Matter protest and I was like, oh my God, I'm an introvert and they're like police with guns. I was like, this is a moment. Thank God for my white friends here who are with me. <laughs> but then I was like, I can never go to that again. Um, I went to one other one, but I was just like, it just wasn't me. And then I was like, writing. That is what you have loved. That is what excites you. That is what changes hearts and minds. That is what saved your life when you were a little kid besides your friends. So I was like, right. So I want people to find their voice and know that voice is beautiful because we need more of your voice as it is, not what you expect it to be. Because I think we're very much taught from an early age, you will change things by doing this. You will change things by doing this. Change makers are never the people who follow what everybody else told them to do. So don't listen to those people who tell you to be a certain way. Find your voice that feels right to you and then use it full tilt as much as you can. And with like being safe, like, for yourself. I think I would say to everybody, it might sound cheesy. Actually, no, it doesn't. I want everybody to know like who's different, that you're like little unicorn phoenixes. You're rising from the ashes of discrimination and you're just trying to make the world more magical. That is never wrong. So I want people to know that like you have this passion and fire inside of you, no matter if it's been squashed, no matter if people come after you, you have magic inside of you. So like, and you are not alone in that. And like, we are all here with you. Even if it's like reaching out by LinkedIn and like reaching out by Twitter. I mean, we're all flooded with like messages. So like, we'll get to it. But like, just know that like, we received that from you. And like, we love you. Um, so that's all what I would pass along to anybody out there who's struggling. Ryan, you go. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> hey. like Ryan, you go. Teacher asked for a volunteer, and everybody's uh, like, no. I, "Nope, I ain't saying nothing now because I've been putting my place." Mm -mm, honey, look, I'm not like an introvert. No, <laughs> um, no, I think very similarly. Um, you know, our flags are rainbow for a reason, and it's gotten more inclusive and more inclusive and more inclusive and I love our progressive flag now, but it's all the colors for a reason. All are welcome in this community. Unless you're hurting somebody, or you're hurting somebody that you shouldn't, we'll take care of that too. <laughs> but we it's this open and welcoming community that even if you have only said the words whatever they may be, gay, queer, bi, strict, whatever, out loud to yourself, practice that truth. Say that to yourself over and over and over until you have the courage to one day, oh, slip that in the conversation. There, I, I don't remember that I felt comfortable saying girlfriend over partner, but there was a change and I didn't recognize that change until much, much later. Sometimes you don't recognize growth when it happens, it just does. And I think that it's absolutely beautiful. And if you are going through something and you resonate with any of us here today, reach out. Like Chase was saying, you know, we, our inboxes get flooded, but we read every single one and we appreciate every single one. And it drives us forward and helps us continue what we are doing. Cause Lord knows we don't know much more than sleep medicine and caffeine, but, <laughs> but we're here and we're doing the thing and live your truth out loud and proud and someone will resonate with you as well. All right, I'll go now. <laughs> um, I think I would say, kind of echoing what Ryan and Chase said, like, you, if you're not out yet, or you're not ready, like, you have a whole queer community waiting for you. And if you don't, if you are out, and you don't have the community, we, we exist, come find us, 
or we'll find you, but you have a whole queer community waiting for you and <laughs> it's gonna be wonderful and supportive and you'll find exactly what you need in it. And I would also just say like, as safe as possible, like be authentic to yourself. It doesn't have to look like me. It doesn't have to look like Chase or Ryan or any of us. It doesn't have to literally look like the way we do, but just stay authentic to yourself, the things that you love, the things that you like, the people that you love, because all of that I think will fall into place eventually and over time. And you know, the more community that you find, allies, queer community, it'll all fit and it'll fall into place and you'll realize exactly where you're supposed to be at that particular time. 